Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Brooks. I am the Director of STEM Workforce Partnerships at the University City Science Center. Um, welcome to um, What's the Next Move? This is the second, I guess, episode in the series uh, for What's the Next Move, and I'm really, really excited uh, to have uh, Howard Pender, um, who is the Assistant Director of Workforce and Economic Inclusion uh, for Drexel University's Dornsife Center. Um, I've known Howard for uh, almost uh, going on a year now. Really great guy, so I'm really excited to have him on to talk a little bit about himself and talk a little bit about what Drexel is doing during these, uh, these really strange times. So um, as Jake mentioned, if you wanna unmute yourself to ask questions, please feel free. Um, definitely wanna make sure this is an open conversation. I have a list of questions myself. I would wanna ask uh, Howard, but definitely um, we can get through as many of them or as little of them as possible. If folks have questions, please, please, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask those questions. Um, so really, um, I wanna turn it over to Howard and really just, um, can you give us um, a little bit of information about yourself um, and about the Dornsife Center? Yeah, thanks, Phil. I'm glad to be here, everyone. So like Phil said, I've been at Drexel now for about a year and a half. Um, uh, let me tell you briefly about the Dornsife Center first, and then I can talk about a little bit of my background, how I ended up here. Um, so the Dornsife Center for Neighborhood Part Partnerships is Drexel's community-based resource center. Um, it's where Drexel community and West Philadelphia residents and other partner organizations collaborate on issues um, of shared importance. Uh, the Dornsife Center focuses on, they have a lot of programs going on. Um, I'm mainly going to talk about my areas of focus, which are adult education, uh, workforce development, and digital literacy. Um, but the Dornsife Center does a whole variety of other things. They're really involved with um, the Mantua and Powhatan Civic Associations. Um, they do art classes, kind of dance classes for the communities, things like that. Um, but like I said, my, my focus is really development. And I got involved in workforce um, at my previous job, where I was actually doing a program called the Philadelphia Furniture Bank, where I hired um, people who were um, returning citizens, they were, you know, returning from jail, or they were transitioning out of homelessness. And I gave them jobs and helped to develop um, kind of like their, their soft skills, their essential skills that we call them in order to be, to fit into the work, modern workplace. Uh, it was an incredible challenge. We were a very small organization and I just sort of saw like how big this work really was. So that was one of the things that attracted me to come to Drexel because, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, um, people who face barriers, um, like some of the ones that I talked about, prison, um, educational, um, you know, a variety of things. It takes a lot of time and resources to become prepared for the modern workforce. And being a part of Drexel was great because I really did get a sense that um, the whole institution was, had some commitment towards economic inclusion, towards making Drexel be a place that um, didn't just benefit like the students, but benefited the whole community around Drexel. And that was really, that's really the point of the Dornsife Center is to be, to use Drexel's resources as a, as a, um, a benefit for um, the whole community. Um, so, like I said, my areas of focus, adult education, workforce development, and my team also does entrepreneurship and financial literacy. That's awesome. Thanks for that synopsis. Um, a lot of folks have been going through a number of challenges, um, specifically for the Dornsife Center. Um, what are some of the, the major challenges uh, that the Dornsife Center has had to go through like during this time? or at least I was rephrase it and say since the start of this time, what were some of the major challenges? Yeah, you know, and not too dissimilar, I think to a lot of people is we're working um, basically completely remotely right now. And that is specifically hard for us because one of, the, one of our largest programs um, is a public computer lab. We have a computer lab that's open, has about 30 computers open to the public. People can come in, get online, they can print, you know, copy, facts, um, do anything that they need to do there. And there's a real community there. People came in um, every day and we really got to know the folks who came in and then they connected to other services at Dornsife Center. And for a lot of people, that is their only internet access. So now that the lab has closed, just like 
almost every computer lab around the city. Um, you know, those folks are without that resource. And so that's a difficult thing. Um, the hardest part is if people don't have a device to use to connect to the internet. A lot of people talk about the phone being a place to connect, which it can be, but you know, connecting to a lot of programs by the phone is still a really big challenge. Um, if you don't have internet, one, so one resource that's out there folks may be aware of is Com Comcast Internet Essentials. So this is Comcast, it's kind of like low income internet option and it's available for $10 a month, but right now they're offering it for free for the first two months if you sign up by June 30th. So that is a good option to get connected online. But once again, if you don't have a device like a computer, it's really hard to get one right now. Um, the places that do refurbishments, uh, you know, a lot of them are closed. So if you can't shell out the money, um, we have a hard time connecting. Um, we do have a place that you can call in and get connection over the phone. So at least if you have a phone, we can connect with you. But it's a challenge, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, we've, we've definitely seen, you know, we we're hearing from less people. A lot of people are, um, you know, kind of hunkering down is our, is our kind of sense, you know, they're, we're hearing from some people, but a lot of people are, uh, are not able to, are not able to, or just not, you know, connecting in the same way right now. Right. Yeah. The disconnect seems like one of the, the biggest challenges for or a lot of folks, um, especially if, a lot of what you do is in-person training or in-person support or in-person resources. Um, just thinking about that has been um, like a significant challenge for a lot of folks, um, which kind of leads me to my next question. Um, with all these challenges kind of like bubbling up um, and some of the things kind of like least likely not returning to the way it was, are, are there changes in mind that the Dornsife uh, Center has in place? Are there things um, that the Dornsife Center Center is either doing currently or thinking about doing in the future in terms of just like significant pivoting uh, because of everything that's going on? Yeah, so there, there are, like with everything I've said before, there are some ways that we've been able to um, kind of pivot and make some resources available. So our Helms Academy, which is our adult education center where people can come in and earn their GED, their high school diploma if they haven't earned it yet. Um, has been able to go completely virtually, meaning you still have to have a computer uh, or a phone with internet access to get there, but we can do the orientation, the intake, and even the instruction all online. And um, I serve on the, the board of um, Philadelphia Adult Literacy Alliance, which brings together all of the adult education providers in the city. And as far as I know, Helms Academy is the only place that's able to do that entire process right now. Um, so for people who do, you know, who are seeking their high school diploma, um, it's a great resource, you know, it's one of the only ones out there right now. Um, so that's been a really big win. Um, we are a really good resource, I should say. And another one that we also have is um, our career services. So career services is a program where we partner with Drexel Human Resources to provide career services for the community. Um, which generally takes look, looks like, you know, resume help, updating your resume, doing job search, um, mock interviews, even it could be for, for a variety of things that people need, cover letter help. Sometimes people come in to help negotiate salary and things like that. Uh, and that program has been able to move entirely online. We used to do it in person at the, uh, the computer lab at the Dornsife Center, but it's all virtual now. If you don't have a computer, you can still call in and connect with one of the people um, and that has helped us also to open it up to other um, career services professionals. So we have professionals from other organizations who volunteer their time to do career services because they want to help and give back and they really don't know how to right now. Right. Uh, and this is one of those ways, you know, it's something you can do virtually something that people have experience with. We have human resources professionals from for-profit companies, other colleges uh, who've been donating their time. And um, it's just been a great resource to be able to provide uh, to people. 
Gotcha. That's really cool. That touched into like my next question or what are some of the, the major wins or even like the minor wins? Um, Helms, Helms Academy, it sounds like is still going, is still functioning, is moving forward, um, which I know is really important. Um, just speaking with lots of employers and continuing connections with employers um, at the at the base level for employment. Um, a lot of that is, you know, you need to make sure you have some type of GED or high school diploma. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of that is non-negotiable with, with a lot of employers. Um, but at the end of the day, that's a huge win, I think. Um, with, with that in mind, you mentioned a few other wins. Are there any other kind of like major or minor wins um, that the Dornsife Center is seeing, uh, specifically with, within this time? Um, but like, what do, you, what do you kind of consider would be wins um, as you're working on them even right now? Yeah, um, I think that, like I mentioned, the Helms and the career services are definitely two wins. Um, just another, I guess, resource that we're doing right now is we're calling it a Zoom room, um, which is kind of like maybe like office hours um, where we are in the Zoom room every, I think it's Monday and Wednesday from 12 to 2, where people can once again log in or call in if they don't have a computer and just and kind of get some of our resources that we have, whether it's the, the job search, whether it's their entrepreneurship program that we do, um, or kind of people come to us just for general troubleshooting sometimes, which, you know, sometimes we can't, we don't have all the answers, but we can help people like, you know, search and find things. Um, so that's just like another resource that we've, that we've opened up that we have had people connect to us by. Um, and it's, it's a low entry, it's a low barrier. You know, you just have to call or log in. Um, but it's, um, it's a good way to kind of stay connected to people that we've been doing. Gotcha. Do you ever get folks who just like call or just want to, just want to talk to somebody else, just want to talk to another human being that's not the, the human beings in their house? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we used that. We, like I said, at our computer lab, we had a real community, um, kind of feel. So people would just call in to say, hi, say how you're doing, say, you know, we miss you guys. We look forward to when you open back up, you know, us coming back around. So it's nice to, uh, it's nice just to chat with people too, not just be doing, you know, kind of, you know, work stuff as well, just checking in. Yeah. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so like partner partnerships with, you know, local community members, and I have the exact uh, question that I wanted to ask you. Um, so for the Dornsife Center, who are some of the community partners the Dornsife Center works with um, that you have found or slash developed ways to continue collaboration during this time? I know lots of folks, again, are having lots of challenges, um, but um, collaboration is kind of like a, a word that I've been hearing over the course of the time um, of the pandemic. I'm just continuing to you know partner with individuals kind of like putting aside any kind of like negative feelings towards others and really just coming together as a community to get stuff done um, what, who, who are some of like either the major partners or partners that you think you can work with later on down the line to, to get a lot of stuff done for for Dornsife yeah so two thoughts on that quickly one is um, I'm kind of a well, it's a story yet to be determined. So with the city budget cuts, um, the city has, uh, their current plan is to eliminate the Office of Adult Education. And um, that is something that I've been working on, we've been working on to advocate for um, that, that that would remain open. The Office of Adult Education really acts as a hub for all the adult education centers throughout the city to get referrals um, and, you know, share learner information, best practices. And so the current plan is for that to go away at the end of this month. Um, the council is having sessions right now, budget sessions to talk about that. So it's not decided 100% yet. Um, but I guess I just say that to say, um, you know, some of this work, some of the partnership is being threatened, you know, and that's might just, that's a reality everywhere. But you know, I thought it was worth uh, mentioning. Not a lot, it hasn't gotten a lot of press yet um, about the Office of Adult Ed, so we're trying to get the word out there. Um, but on, I think some of the positive sides, um, one of the organizations we partner closely with is uh, Episcopal Community Services. And they do a lot of work. Uh, they have a whole housing division where they have some shelters and help with housing. And then they have also a team that does workforce development and um, connects, helps to, 
helps to work with people who want to further their careers or education and maybe don't have all of the tools and they give, um, it's not exactly case management, but maybe light case management, but a lot of support to help people meet their goals. Um, they run a program called Mindset that um, has been a great partnership between us. Dornsife was actually, they told us was like by far away the number one um, organization who referred like the most people to their program. Awesome. So that felt really good. And they're going to be starting up. Their current plan is to start up another cohort in September. And so I've done like a Zoom call with them and getting up to date information on that and like hope to spread that resource because, you know, it's nobody can do all the work alone. You know, we don't want to do that or expect to do it. Um, and so we look to partner with them. And then one other one is, um, the Lenfest, um, the Lenfest at North Philadelphia um, Temple University. So they have a work for it. They have a collaboration between the Lenfest Center and Temple University that focuses on workforce. And they've done a lot of trying to connect with employers about what their hiring needs are right now. Because there are places that are hiring. Um, CVS was one of the places I was on a call for that was looking to hire 50,000 people nationally. Um, because it's one of those really essential businesses right now that, you know, people can't go without and there's an opportunity for growth there for them. Um, Pennsylvania State Police is another place that's looking to hire. So they're one that's going to do another session, I think, tomorrow um, that I'm going to be on. So those are resources that, you know, I get and help to share back with the community. Um, so there are still places that are working on this. It's just a little, a little bit more few and far between right now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I know I get emails from you about like specific resources. Um, I guess for the folks who are on the call, um, if they wanted to like learn a little bit more about kind of like the collaborations and resources, they can just reach out to you, Dornsife Center. Um, how, how can they get in touch with what's going on in the community? Yeah, so there are, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the best way, if you are interested, honestly, and you're here or you wanna like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put my email address, my name and my email address into the chat. Um, just reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm on, we're on Instagram. Uh, we've got mailing lists. You know, there's ways to connect that way. But I think I might be able to do a better job just, you know, um, reaching out to you. And feel free to share that, too, if people want to connect. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the best way um, to, to do it. You know, we've, you know, we're online. You can find us on, you can Google the Dornsife Center um, or the Dornsife Center Drexel on Instagram. But, yeah. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk. That's awesome. Thanks, Howard. The The one thing I remember seeing um, before the pandemic was a lot of resource fairs or a lot of job fairs. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of that has transitioned into virtual job fairs. Um, and we kind of come up against this like rock in a hard place situation where, you know, folks who need jobs may not have access to computers or folks who need jobs may not have access to Wi-Fi. And if the virtual kind of like job fairs are, you know, going exactly that virtual, you know, a lot of questions are being thrown up about, you know, how can we get those folks connected? I know you mentioned Comcast um, has something which is in the works and that's constantly rolling. Um, but are you seeing kind of like more virtual job fairs happening? Or because I know you have your ears to the ground with like a lot of community folks. Are you seeing more kind of like virtual job fairs popping up? Are they kind of like few and far in between? Kind of like what, what's your sense of of like virtual job fairs right right now during this time yeah um i have seen a few i mean definitely more than before which is where i've hardly seen any um, right. i have seen a couple um my sense is like we haven't quite technology on that um you know just as like in the way i don't know if you've ever done these like large zoom meetings you know with like over a hundred people or um you know a job for is like a job fair is actually much more complicated even than that and that's hard to figure out the technology for um so they're trying to do it but i don't know i haven't seen one that's like super successful yet to be honest right. but i haven't seen i don't see everything um you know the best thing for job seekers that i see um career link is is always a pretty good resource but right now i've seen the most job postings the most consistent um, opportunities right now are on CareerLink Philadelphia. Um, and I think that's because um, 
I'm not exactly sure why it is because all those people are still working, you know, career link is, is like still completely up to capacity and they have, they're seeing far fewer clients come into their centers. So maybe they've been able to ramp up their online presence, but um, they've stayed consistent with the jobs that they're posting. So that's one of the first places that I turn people towards. And the second are, um, you know, the professional development opportunities, because, you know, what I explained to people is we've lost, about 30 million jobs in the country and they're not all coming back tomorrow, unfortunately. Uh, so when we're waiting for those while we're looking and still applying, we can also be um, working on our skills and making ourselves more qualified candidates for our next job. And that works, that's, you know, goes to professional development. Um, CareerLink has some opportunities. LinkedIn has some free opportunities. You can join for their professional developments free for the first two months. Um, we hope to be, we're gonna be offering some of that. Um, I can get to that in a minute um, as well. But, you know, unfortunately not, there's not gonna be jobs for everybody right now, but it doesn't mean that we can't like make ourselves more qualified for when jobs do start hiring again. Right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, even in terms of just like employers having either a hiring freeze, um, once they're kind of like out of that hiring freeze, it would be really great to have the talent ready and willing and able and available um, and, and safe at the same time um, to take and kind of like fill some of those roles with some of the employers we're constantly um, having conversations with. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Howard. That's all the questions I specifically have. Um, I definitely want to turn it over to the folks uh, in the call. Um, please unmute yourself if you have uh, any questions for Howard uh, or any questions related to Dorrance Life Center at this time. Yeah. And yeah, and please do. I have one more thing to add um, that I forgot to mention. Uh, so the professional development next step, we're looking to offer at the Dorrance Life Center some uh, professional credentials um, for folks um, in the sense of Microsoft Office and a Salesforce administrator uh, credential. Um, so there's going to be information coming out about this soon. If you want more, like I said, my email is in the chat. Um, but it's obvious that work is going to be a lot more online now um, for a lot of people for we don't know how long. And so to keep people competitive in that market, we just have to be giving digital workforce skills. Um, so that is definitely part of our part of our focus uh, right now. So yeah, thanks for that. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. And please, I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions as well. Uh, can you guys hear me? My my bandwidth kind of just dropping. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I actually had a question uh, related to what you were just talking about, Howard. Um, so, given that you know work is going to be largely virtual um, for a long time, is um, like Zoom or virtual interview training something that the Dornsife Center is considered offering in the future? Because um, I know it can be you know, a little disjointed or awkward for a lot of people um, at a regular interview even, but especially so when you're meeting someone online? Yes, that is a great question. Um, and yes, it is something I hope to be offering in the future. Um, actually, one of the volunteers for Career Services, she's a human resource um, specialist at Deloitte, which is like a consulting company. And she had the same idea. She asked if we would do this or if, that would be something that we could provide because um, people don't know exactly how to, to how to handle that. Um, you know, there's different um, there's different uh, professionalism that comes into that. Uh, there's obviously just the regular technology issues that you know a lot of people you know nervousness that people have, especially if you're not really comfortable with the platform. So uh, yes, it is definitely on our list. We haven't. Um, completely mastered that one yet, but that is something we hope to do. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of factors play into that uh, lighting uh, background. Like small things here and there are are really important, but we don't know if if that's going to like subtract or add to the employer's. Uh, uh, 
wanting to hire that person for virtual interviewing. And what, what's really funny is I always heard the term, oh, this, we're going to have this Skype interview for somebody doing an interview in California who wants to move to New York. And I always heard that every, every single time. Um, now it's, it's way more prevalent to, to either have Skype interviews or Zoom interviews. So I'm right there with you, Howard. I, I would love to either collaborate or work with folks on like how to do virtual interview training, um, something that could be an add-on to all the other resources that's happening right now. Um, so as a matter of fact, I'll talk to you about it on Monday. Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds great. Other questions from folks here? Howard, I'm Christy Shooter McGuire from the Wistar Institute. Um, I just wanted to ask if you had other suggestions for you know things that um, people who find themselves without a job could do to upskill in addition to the the digital workplace uh, skills that you mentioned. Yeah, um, I mean, so I mentioned the LinkedIn professional learning um, career link does have some some like professional trainings on it. They have something called a um, Oh, I forget the, I'm forgetting the exact name of it. It's a, um, it's a way to basically um, expand your skill set. So if you, you know, for example, have been always in customer service, working in customer service, the skills test will like give you different language and like kind of teach you different skills that you might have in order to get into different fields. Um, you know, an example would just be like in, if you're working in retail, uh, and a lot of, you know, the retail industry is not doing great right now. Um, it'll t it could teach you possibly other skills that you have that could connect you um, in the operations world where they're still doing deliveries and, um, you know, working in warehouses right now, for example. Um, so that's just a couple um, of, of places. And I also always encourage people um, to volunteer, which might not seem like um, their, their example, their opportunities right now, but I have, I've seen some organizations looking for online volunteers for food banks, um, because one of the things I always hear from employers is that volunteering makes a difference to them and uh, that they like to see that on resumes. Um, so if you're not able to work, if there is volunteering, um, you know, opportunities available, I think that's another way, um, you know, to have something to add to your resume right now. But thanks for the question. I can throw out another one if nobody else. <laughs> I must say, I must say, go ahead. <laughs> so I thought that the CVS example was great, um, right? As definitely an example of um, a place that's hiring during pandemic and you know probably um, foreseeable future anyway because of um, you know aging populations needs. Uh, do you have any other examples of either specific employers or specific industries that, you know, have, have seen an increase in hiring um, right now during the pandemic and that we might be able to look into our crystal balls and predict could be, uh, you know, major employers post pandemic? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, a couple of the ones that are obvious are um, the delivery services, you know, that are out there and that's anything from, and you know, these are all not great careers necessarily, but they're places, you know, to like kind of, you know, work in the meantime and pay the bills. So that's the delivery services, the DoorDash, um, you know, the grocery delivery places, Amazon as well. Um, and those I do expect, those are our hiring and I do expect them to grow. Uh, Another one would be um, home health aides um, and this is the healthcare industry in general, uh, but not everybody, you know, maybe can go back and get like a bachelor's of nursing, but in the health home healthcare aid is something that doesn't require a ton of education, but there are a lot of places hiring right now. And I don't hundred percent, to be honest, know enough about the industry to know why that is. It might just be, be because it's in the healthcare industry. People are, you know, stepping out that they're worried about exposure. Um, but it's definitely a hiring industry right now. And I think healthcare is going to be something that's going to continue to grow with or without the pandemic that would happen. Um, and the last one is cloud services. Um, so that's everything 
you know, everything that has to do with the cloud providing support online um, that even includes, you know, customer service um, remotely, all the call centers that's, they are, they're not hiring as much right now, although they are hiring, but that's definitely going to be a place of growth in the future. Um, the people who I talk to in the industry and in cloud services says that while most all industries are declining right now, their growth has stayed about, about flat. Um, and that's, that's kind of amazing considering all the companies that have closed. So of course for cloud services, there's like a higher educational, you know, requirements that you have to meet there. So it's not going to be open to everybody. Um, the Salesforce certification that I mentioned earlier is one of those credentials that, um, is pretty good right now. So Salesforce is a, for, if people aren't familiar, it's a CRM. Um, oh, and it's, um, uh, sorry. I just saw someone was putting in the, talking in the chat too. Thanks. Um, customer relationship manager, manager that works all online. And it's a, um, a credential that, you know, can get you jobs right away right now. Um, so I expect that to grow in the future uh, for sure. Awesome. So my clock says uh, 345. Um, so thank you everyone uh, for joining. Howard, thank you very much. Um, as I said, I'll talk to you on Monday, um, but I definitely appreciate your time. I definitely appreciate uh, you being on this series. Um, and thank you everyone. Have a, have a great evening. Thanks. Thanks guys.